In the past 200 years, the global economy has shifted to different stages. The Industrial Revolution kickstarted a crucial process. Goods started to be produced in mass. Demand for these manufactured goods skyrocketed and deficiency in production was everything. During the latter half of the 20th century, technology spurred a new wave. Companies became more intelligent, more customer focused and globalization ensured that they managed to scale to levels never seen before. A lot of today's largest companies were created at that time. The 21st century has seen the rise of startups and entrepreneurs. If before, starting a company was reserved for the true visionaries, nowadays people that have clever ideas, business experience and an appetite for risk are starting more and more companies. Some of these companies end up being huge successes. Companies such as Google, Facebook or Uber were initially startups that had a few people working on an innovative idea. Most of them though are massive failures. And there are a lot of reasons for their failure. Not launching at the right time, not having a proper team in place or not enough funding. If there's one thing these past two decades have popularized, it's the notion of a startup. And the startup needs three key actors in order to be successful. The founders, the investors and the end users. A startup is usually kicked off by a few founders who have an innovative idea. They run initial tests, come out with the first version of their product and launch it. If they come out at the right time, if their idea is good and the implementation is spot on, then their startup might gain traction. So what happens after? Because competition is fierce, they need to grow fast. So they will seek contribution from other parties in exchange for shares within their company. This is where the investors come into play. If everything goes according to plan, the company scales from the limited initial user base to a successful venture. It still potentially has all its founders on board, it has shareholders that take part in the decision making process and a lot of end users that enjoy their service. However, there are a lot of ifs. Because so many elements need to align, very few of these companies turn into successes and grow exponentially. All this does is perpetuate the centralization of governance that we discussed in our previous video. Huge corporations with immense power that are led by a minority who handles the decision making process. The question then becomes, if more and more people strive for the decentralization of governance, why has this system perpetuated in the internet age? Why has decentralized governance not been possible until now? And what will enable it to become a reality? It might come as a surprise to many, but the underlying problem behind this is not the people, their forms of organization or any regulatory barriers. It's actually technology. In the 70s, companies started developing SQL databases that they used internally to store and sort large amounts of data. They became an essential part of how these companies operated. Technology has since evolved at an accelerated pace. By the 90s, computer networks and the early phases of the internet came. These internal systems worked perfectly well for each individual company. It made them more efficient, it allowed them to have more data and make better decisions. However, because these softwares were built to solve a specific internal need, the end result was vastly different than the solution other companies had implemented. This led to compatibility issues. If company A wanted to sync its systems with company B, they would have to write a third piece of software to facilitate communication between these systems. This would still be a feasible solution from both the cost and implementation perspective. But what happened if five companies wanted their systems to communicate? How about 10 or 50? The complexity grows exponentially. It becomes an economic cost that is unjustifiable. Which is why nowadays companies that facilitate these interactions through recognized standards have made a huge impact. Credit card processors such as Visa, telecommunications companies such as T-Mobile or social media networks like Facebook hold the power. They have established standards that allow users to consume their services. And they capture a share of the resources exchanged on through their platforms, be it via processing fees, monthly subscription or advertising to name a few. This is why the blockchain is such a significant technological advancement. It sounds like a complicated term, but it is in essence a database that works like a network. And it's defined by the non-editability of the data and the digital signature. This means that everyone has a copy of the smart contracts on the blockchain and we all know who did what because of digital signatures. 
Every company has complex internal systems that everybody uses but very few people truly understand. Blockchain is exactly the same. You don't need to know how it functions at its core in order to understand how it can be used. The biggest opportunity it enables is the democratization of governance of companies. Decentralization. And that's exactly what District 0x is attempting to realize. Let's look at how it will be done specifically. By crowdfunding community and marketplace ideas, we will have thousands of people participate in the running of our districts. We will essentially allow these people to govern collectively, use intelligent software to allocate rules and vote on leadership. Remember the three key players in the traditional startup? The founders, the investors and the end users? The key difference here is the significant overlap that will exist between the owners of a district and the end users of that district. Within District 0x there are three parties involved. The district creators, similar to the startup founders, the DNT holders, which are the investors, and the end users. The biggest difference sits in the alignment of their incentives. The district creators will have access to existing systems that will facilitate easy creation of decentralized autonomous organizations. The DNT holders will be able to stake their tokens in order to participate in the running of a district. They have a larger say in the services that they use and will also benefit financially if those districts become successful. And the end users will experience lower fees in most cases and increased trust across the board due to the transparency and accountability present in the governance of these districts. So how does District 0x practically ensure this happens? From a technical standpoint, we have created D0X Infra, an open source framework comprised of a set of Ethereum contracts and front-end libraries. This is the mandatory ingredient to deploy new districts and equip them with baseline functionalities. From the governance standpoint, this is where users stand to benefit the most. District 0X will be using Aragon, an operating system for decentralized autonomous organizations. This will ensure that all the contributing parties will have an easy to use software to administer and govern a district. The Aragon entity assigned to a district will allow those who stake their tokens to distribute voting rights, assign roles, handle fundraising or change the bylaws that govern that particular district. The District 0x network token or DNT will be the key tool that ensures equal opportunities for everyone and will help align the incentives for participation within a district. The DNT holders will be able to stake these tokens to the districts of their choosing, thus allowing them to have a say in the evolution of those districts. Their powers will not be limited to the individual districts themselves. They will be able to contribute to the overall District 0x project. Initially, this will be done by signaling which districts they want to see created with more capabilities being implemented along the way. Ultimately, the entire governance of the District 0x project will be in the hands of DNT holders. This will lead to decentralized ownership that is based on having numerous small investors and spreading the risk much thinner. Complete decentralized governance. An entity that comprises numerous communities and marketplaces that are run by thousands of people at the same time. An end result where we unite owners, users and the governance of systems under the same interests. And ultimately districts that will genuinely represent the interests of the users because those users are also the owners. With projects such as Ethlands and Meme Factory, we have already seen that this governance model can become a reality. And with community engagement, rising momentum and general awareness of governance decentralization, we believe this is only the beginning. If you want to join us and build the communities of tomorrow, then contribute to the District 0x project and be a part of this unique opportunity.